You know the guy that pretends to have a a beam sword. What do you call? Him? He a walks beam around. Sword? What, what do you call them? Laser. What do you Dude, call? You lightsaber. 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 Oh, lightsaber. Yeah. Sorry. You cannot be in the last half game. A light sword, dude. Hi, Christos. Christos. Yeah, whatever. You Greek or something? Yes, indeed. Oh, you're our first economical immigrant on the show. Welcome. Thank you. But you're also a PhD student. What's your research about? Uh, it's about KBE. What does KBE stand for? Knowledge-based engineering. But shouldn't you be doing knowledge-based economy? Christos, KBE, what is that actually? Uh, it's been described as a computer-aided design meets artificial intelligence. What? Okay, uh, let me think of an example to illustrate it to you. Let's say you're a company that wants to design a factory that makes... Uh, feta cheese. Fe feta cheese, yeah. Go <laughs> feta cheese. Um, so, you, you gather a bunch of engineers that uh, supposedly possess uh, the required knowledge to design this factory. Like what? Like um, how to design a building, what equipment will be needed in the factory, where the equipment should go and why to save space, yeah. etc. So they sit around the room and they brainstorm uh, trying to create different possibilities for, for solving this design problem. Okay. Like um, where to put the coats that make the milk or where the smoking room is going to be. And, and they, they are creating possibilities there. Okay. So, uh, say the boss uh, says you should use less than 9,000 person hours. Um, this basically forces the engineering team to uh, select some, some of them ideas. They have to pick a few that they have to explore further because of this time limit. And the way they do this is they create uh, 3D models uh, of their ideas that they can then analyze. And these models are created in um, computer-aided design software or CAD. And these models have a greater level of detail in them which allows them to make more informed decisions on which of their ideas uh, sounds more fit for, for the, the, the problem. Okay. Did I do this again? So at this point, they have committed to one of their ideas, so let's call it the final design, and they start adding more and more detail. For example, where the pipes run through and why, or whether you should have a fire extinguisher or not. <laughs> Uh, so then you take this to the boss and he uh, or she um, says, wow, that's very nice, but we just got a call from the feta cheese company and they went bankrupt. <laughs> well, that was um, unexpected. Yeah. <laughs> so let's say that uh, for some reason uh, you move the factory to Norway, someone buys the design or something. <laughs> And that means you have to start the design process from the beginning. Why? Can, couldn't you just use the, the same factory design in Norway? Uh, no, you cannot, you cannot because there would be different regulations there. For example, uh, oh, the, 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 the building architecturally needs to blend with the surroundings and <laughs> you cannot like dump goats in the river or something. So now you have to restart the design process. Uh, so this means you need to uh, uh, do more brainstorming, you need to uh, select a few ideas and make 3D models in CAD. Uh, you need to commit to a, to a final design and detail it further. And this design process for the uh, Norwegian factory uh, is going to take more or less the same time as the Greek one. But here's the interesting thing. Um, Lots of the design tasks that are going to be in the design process are going to be very similar for these two cases. For example, you still need to use a CAD software and, and make the models. You, uh, you still um, need to put floors and walls and, and goats uh, in the factory. <laughs> and um, the reasoning behind certain design decisions that the engineer make um, are going to be the same. The reason is going to be the same. And the engineers know how to do this. They have it in their heads. They just need to go in and do this routine work and uh, 
Since it's routine work, one may ask themselves why don't we try to automate it? And you have a washing machine at home. Uh, you put your clothes in and it takes away the manual work that you do. So it gives you more time to do other stuff while it's washing your clothes. And companies really like to um, reduce the design time by automating certain tasks. That means they have less cost for the design process and they can offer a more competitive price to their customers or they can be more innovative with the time savings. So how do you automate the design process? Well, uh, you need to take the knowledge from the engineers and write it down into code. So everything from a factory needs to have four walls and type of roof, etc. And this type of equipment needs to go there for a specific reason. Uh, to, um, in Norway, uh, these materials have to be used that uh, respect environmental uh, regulations. And this means that um, engineers in a KB software could choose, for example, food factory and then feta cheese factory and then uh, Greece as a location. And um, a, a Greek feta cheese factory template would sort of be generated uh, quite quickly. Uh, so if you get a change like bankruptcy or something, then you could select Norway as a location and uh, then the computer works out uh, what uh, parameters need to change uh, to follow the regulations, etc. And automatically does more, most of these small changes, something that would take uh, lots of time to do uh, manually. And um, looking at this as um, every piece of knowledge is a building block that together they form a template uh, is a way of looking at it. Uh, that um, includes all the constraints that you have set. Sounds like you can save a lot of time with KBE. Exactly. Uh, since you automate the routine work in a design process, you can dedicate more time to trying out uh, new ideas, uh, being creative, or you can dedicate time to not working that much. Um, also, um, if you have to change something later in the design process, it means that this gives you the possibility to do it without uh, increasing the cost to, to extremes. Um, also, since you reduce the time you spend in, in, in the software for every single idea you explore, uh, it means that you can explore more ideas in detail before you make your, your final decision to commit. And of course you can even try uh, really crazy innovative ideas that no one has done before. Wow. But how does KBE use artificial intelligence? It's not some conscious software that solves the problem for you. Well, no it's not. KBE captures the engineer's routine knowledge and intuition in order to mimic the design process. Um, it is intelligence in the sense that you can ask for certain characteristics you want and it will perform a part of the uh, design process for you. Okay, so how do KBE developers actually capture all of this? Well, first of all, you need um, an expert, a specialist that holds all the knowledge of the process you want to automate. Then you need a programmer that, would, that will write the knowledge into code mm. and then you need a KBE developer <laughs> that will can gather and integrate all this into a software and all these people need to work together. Sounds like a time-consuming process. Yes uh, it is at the moment uh, quite time-consuming and that's why it's useful to develop um, a more efficient uh, knowledge capturing process. And that's what your research is about. Oh, not feta cheese. Not feta cheese. No, that's not in, in, the, in the research, I would say. Not, not economics. So Christos, how can NTNU students learn more about KBE? Well, we have this course here at our department. Um, I'm one of the lecturers and teaching assistants. Wow. So they can learn a lot about KBE in that course. I get the feeling that you don't like CAD, Spartan. No, it has many limitations. 
you cannot simply stop using CAD because... Choose your words carefully, Norwegian. This is blasphemy. This is madness. Madness? This is KBE. Whoa! Are you actually Spartan? Yeah, I am. Actually, I was raised there. <laughs> You don't look Spartan. You don't look like a Viking. <laughs> Where are your horns, man? <laughs> You're not horny. 